Hello, welcome to Krakow. This is the first time we are filming history in a nutshell from the royal city of Krakow with the marvelous castle just behind me and the splendid towers of the Wawel Cathedral on my right hand side and your left. Today I'd like to tell you a little bit about the last king from the Jagiellonian dynasty and he was Sigismund II. He was a marvelous monarch, but unfortunately he didn't leave an heir, so the Jagiellonian dynasty expired after him. He was actually born on the 30th of August 1520, so today. Now, he was a very shrewd monarch, very intelligent, great patron of arts. Uh, he was very unlucky with his wives, he had three of them, and unfortunately none of them produced any children. He was married to Anne of Austria, he was married to Barbara Radziwiłł, which was actually a scandalous marriage and wasn't very popular in Poland at that time, and then he married Catherine of Habsburg. Now, none of his wives were extremely happy with him and neither he was happy with them, not just because uh, they didn't have any children, but also because they didn't really love each other. Well, he did love Barbara Rajibu, but he un she unfortunately died very soon after the marriage. The other wife had an epilepsy and the last one he sent back to Vienna, so it wasn't very successful. Now, Sigismund was the son of uh, Sigismund the Old and Bona Sforza. He ruled wonderfully for a, quite a long time, even though he died at the age of 51. Now, the fact that he didn't have any children had great repercussion because the Jagiellonian dynasty, of course, finished with him. In fact, Polish parliament was so desperate for an heir that they would even accept an illegitimate child of his. So any bastard boy would actually count as the next king. Now, Sigismund was very keen on arts. He collected obsessively. There is a marvelous collection at the Wawel Castle of 360 tapestries that he actually commissioned in Brussels. It took the Brussels workshops to produce them. It took almost 10 years to do that. Now, Sigismund is very famous for one thing, and that is the Union of Lublin, which actually we celebrated quite recently. That was the union that connected the Lithuanian uh, dukedom with the Polish kingdom. So, it created this enormous union that, well, basically it was a Polish-Lithuanian commonwealth and created an enormous country. The Polish kingdom at this time was probably the biggest kingdom of the European continent. Sigismund, as I said, was a great collector of arts, uh, very unlucky with the wives. Uh, he had a very dramatic but very effective relationship with Polish Parliament, which was called Sejm. Uh, another interesting fact, uh, the last one perhaps I will tell you today about, is his funeral. His funeral was really splendid and was the last great funeral of any Polish monarchs. The funeral cortege actually went from Tykocin Castle, which belonged to him, via Warsaw all the way to Krakow. And hundreds of courtiers were participating in that funeral cortege. It was an amazing sight, actually, uh, with the colors and the, the ritual was quite unbelievable. What is interesting, when the funeral cortege reached the cathedral here, uh, there was this marvelous tradition of a knight riding on a horse in full armor, dressed as the king. Then the actual knight would collapse on the floor, symbolizing the death of the king. Also, they would break the royal seals and then throw the helmet, lance, uh, shield and the royal insignia on the floor. So that would be the end of the whole thing. We actually know how Sigismund looks like in his coffin because um, uh, there was a, a ceremony of, uh, well, in 1970s, I think, future Pope John Paul II actually asked for the coffin to be open. And so we know exactly the clothes he's dressed in and the jewelry. It's very interesting, really. Anyway, wonderful monarch and a splendid place. What truly great Renaissance residence and probably the greatest royal castle in Poland. So there you go. Worth visiting. And yes, best wishes from Krakow. See you soon.